everyone's day is off to an amazing start. Thanks so much for stopping in today, guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are cooking. Today we are making a hearty one pot meal. This is a recipe that is an oldie but goodie here in my family. We love this dish. It is chicken and dumplings. Please guys, chime in in the comments and let me know if you've ever had chicken and dumplings, all right? Let me know if you have any shortcuts for making chicken and dumplings because I have some that I will be sharing with you here in just a few minutes. And these shortcuts are going to come in handy as it is after four o'clock. And I've stated this many, many times before that my family loves to eat at five. So, if I'm not real chatty in this video, actually someone said, in the last, I believe it was, cook with me video that I was doing too much talking. Just get to the food. So, um, love, you'll probably get your wish today as I'm really going to try to push this video along. However, those of you who prefer more chatty videos, let me know if that is um, actually your preference. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started. items that we will need for today's chicken and dumplings are of course your chicken. As you know, if you have made chicken and dumplings before, you can use whatever parts of the chicken you prefer. All right, a lot of us I know use shredded chicken for our chicken and dumplings. Um, we'll just take a chicken breast, uh, chicken tenders even, and you know, shred them up after we cook them and place that in as the meat for the chicken and dumplings. I, however, prefer to have a mixture. I love to have the chicken on the bone because you guys know a lot of the flavor in our poultry is actually, um, when we're making like a stock, comes from the bone. So I have some chicken legs here. I have six chicken legs to be exact. And what I also like to do is also shred up a little um, chicken breast inside of my chicken and dumplings also, but um, as luck would have it, I don't have any chi uh, chicken breast today. So we're just gonna have the chicken legs. We're going to need two medium carrots. I still have to wash these. So I'll do that here in just a second. The chicken has already been washed and clean. Three celery ribs. And if you're like me, you get celery, you use it in a recipe and you don't go back to it. And so it just ends up going bad. So I just chose to purchased some celery already cut up in this little container here. We will also need a container of chicken broth. All right, I have the low sodium uh, chicken broth right here. This is just some oil. This is actually some avocado oil. We will need some cream of chicken soup and I have the large can of it here because I plan on um, you know, making quite a bit for today and also tomorrow so that we can have leftovers. I have a little bit of poultry seasoning here. All right, and then now, this is where it's kind of debatable, all right? What I like to use as my dumpling are these little tea biscuits. They're very, very small biscuits, as you can see here in the bag, very, very small. And what I do is I plop them right over into my broth and they make just the best little dumplings. I know some people like to use the Pillsbury um, quick dough biscuits, you know, the kind in the can. Those are great as well. And then I know that there are also people who like to just make their dumplings from scratch. However, if you are ever in a hurry, going with the uh, Pillsbury biscuits in the can or these little frozen biscuits that you can purchase in the freezer section of your grocery store are also great. And guys, I think that is just about everything that we are going to need. guys I use 
It calls for three celery ribs. So I'm using two, four, six of the celery pieces. And that should be about enough. I don't like my um, chicken and dumplings to be too chunky with the veggies. I really like for the, you know, the biscuits, the dumplings, and the broth to be like the star of the, of the recipe, the star of the show. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and heat up my pot. All right, so now, get this heated. I'm gonna add a little bit of the avocado oil. All right. All right, so while my pan is heating up, I'm going to take my poultry seasoning and just sprinkle it over the top of the chicken and just kind of rub it in. As you saw, that was not a whole lot of poultry seasoning because the chicken, cream of chicken soup actually has a lot of flavor in it. So you don't need to overpower the chicken with the poultry seasoning, just enough to give you that little essence. I think poultry seasoning has a lot of sage in it. So as you guys know, sage is a very aromatic, very powerful herb, so we don't need a lot of it. Okay, just gonna rub that in. Okay. Just enough room for all six chicken legs. And what I'm trying to do here is just to get a little color on all the sides. I'm not really trying to cook the chicken right now, just trying to get it to have a little bit of color. I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil. Just a little drizzle. All right, so while the chicken is browning behind me, I'm going to go ahead and chop up my veggies. And because this is a quick one pot meal, I'm just going to not worry or bother with pulling out my big food processor. I'm actually going to use this little small one here that I purchased, I believe I purchased this little thing at Kroger for like $14, but it is so handy. I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Go ahead and plug it in. Yeah, right. Grab a bowl. Let's put these guys in. Okay. I think I need to actually cut them up, maybe just a little bit. Do the celery first. Now, although this guy is really powerful, you don't want to overload it with too much food.
why do I, I always do this, I forget to put the blade back in. So. Do y'all do that? Do y'all take the blade out and then forget to put it back in before reloading it? All right. This is what happens when I get in a hurry. This is what happens. Okay. Do, do, do. Of the veggies so now I'm going to remove the chicken and set it aside go ahead and add the veggies to that same pan because remember this is a one pot recipe and give them a little saute also so remember guys this is not fully cooked just has a little bit of color. That is all. All right, so now, as you can see, we have some good little brown bits going on in the bottom of the pan. So now we're going to add just a little bit more of the avocado oil and then add in the veggies. So the celery and the carrots, they're picking up all that flavor that's down here in the bottom of the pan that was kind of left over from the chicken. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead at this point and add in my chicken broth. And this is a 32 ounce container of chicken broth. I'm gonna slowly add that in. that can opener so much. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add the soup to the broth. Give that a stir. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and fill my can up all the way filled up with water. I think you guys can kind of see why you don't really add salt to this dish also. There's already a lot of sodium in that soup and um, that's also why I got the low sodium chicken broth also. So what we're going to do now is just let this come to a boil because you really want to break up all those chunks of the uh, cream of chicken soup. 
you want, this, you want those to kind of melt down. are coming to a boil I'm going to go ahead and open up my biscuits and so there are 24 biscuits here in the bag and I think let me see there's six pieces of chicken I think I'm going to add about 14 of the biscuits to the broth I think let me grab some scissors I think it's like my favorite part of the chicken and dumplings are the dumplings. Just like with banana pudding, my favorite component of the banana pudding are the vanilla wafers. So I really like to have a lot of these. But do you see, the recipe is just about done, guys. This dish is just about done. I didn't have to go and make biscuits from scratch. You obviously can if you want to, but when you are in a time crunch and you're not really trying to dirty up every dish in the kitchen, just going out and purchasing a bag of these little tea biscuits or you get the biscuits in the can and I think you actually cut those in strips because those biscuits are so large but you see these are just really teeny tiny little petite biscuits so I'm just gonna count out about 12 to 14 of these not quite sure yet I may either it might even add in an additional one because these are so so good And so this way we have about, you know, there are three of us eating this. So that's three dumplings each. But guys, look at how small the dumplings are. So I think I'm going to give everybody one more dumpling. Yeah. All right. So let's go back over. And again, these were the Mary B's tea biscuits. If you guys go to Mary Max, you also get little tea biscuits with your they're like the starter when they bring out the bread mary max here in atlanta it's like a little tea room um they have soul food let me got let me know also guys if you guys frequent mary max tea room here in atlanta if you do then you know what i'm talking about with their little tea biscuits and i think you get some cornbread and these little cinnamon roll type rolls those are my favorite they are so buttery flaky and good just the right amount of sweetness before they bring out your meal all right so let's go back over and check and see if our broth and soup and veggie mixture is boiling guys can see it has come up to a really nice boil now this is what I do as you I, I'm not sure if you guys can really see it but the broth and the soup mixture is a little bit thin for my liking so what I have done is taken about a cup of the broth and mixed it with a tablespoon and a half or so of flour and made this little frothy mixture right here and I'm just gonna pour that back in. Ooh, hot. Pour that back in there. And what this is going to do is really thicken up the soup mixture. Of course, you could use cornstarch or you could omit this step altogether if you like more of a thin or soupy uh, chicken and dumplings. Okay, and so now that that has come back up to a boil, what we're going to do is add our chicken back in and uh, it'll be able to finish cooking now.
So ideally, you wanna make sure all of your chicken is actually covered with the liquid so that, so that it can boil you know, and really cook through. I'm gonna place my lid back on, turn it down a little bit, and I'm gonna let that cook for about 10 to 15 minutes and then the dumplings should be ready to be added in. So as you guys can see, it has come up to a really, really good broil or boil now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my biscuits. All right, I have 12 biscuits here and I'm just going to randomly place them in. And because this broth is so hot, they will actually cook, as you guys know, right in this broth. Now these biscuits were actually frozen as, uh, before I started. Um, they thaw out really quickly, so as you can see, they've pretty much thawed out now. Um, but you do wanna keep these particular biscuits frozen until you're ready. Give them a little stir. You don't want them to stick together. Put my top back on and let them cook for about 12 more minutes. Bring you guys closer. 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 Hey. Hey. So it is all done, it is super hot, but I'm going to give it a really, really quick taste test for you guys. It's so hot, it's so, so, so hot. Ooh. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like a deconstructed chicken pot pie with a lot of crust. And I love, love, love crust. I love crust in my pies, my cobblers. So yeah, it is so good guys. I wish I could really dig in here, but it, it is super hot and the vultures have started to circle. So let me know your thoughts on my little recipe. Give me your tips and tricks for your little quick one pot chicken and dumplings. I really appreciate you guys stopping in. I'm ready to eat. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.